when you first start up in design, you will get this wizard pop up on the screen. Now, all we're going to do today is new document, but if you have a pre-existing document you wish to edit, obviously you would do open file. I'm going to close the wizard, and then if the wizard doesn't show up, you would simply do file, new, document. Now, the default presets. Now, by default, on your machines, you should just have custom and default. At the moment, we're going to leave it on default. The intent, we'll explain what that is in a moment, but in the intent, we're going to have print. Web is for web design, obviously, and digital publishing is for like e-publishing or interactive PDFs, etc., etc. So, remember, intent, print. Number of pages, how many pages you wish to have in your document. This can be changed at a later date. So, for example, today I'm just going to put three in. Facing pages is on. We're going to leave that on. Facing pages is to do how the final document is going to be laid out. I.e. facing pages is like a magazine and a newspaper. I.e. the pages are facing each other. Start page number. Start page number is simply the number that would appear on the first page of the document. In most cases it's going to be one, you know. But if you are using or working together with two people, say for example, a 20 page pamphlet and the first person's doing the first 10 pages and the second person's doing the next 10 pages. So the second person would actually start in page number would be 11, i.e. they would do from 11 to 20. So when they put page numbering on, their first page would actually come up as number 11. But for today, we're just going to leave it as 1. So page sizes. The most popular ones are here. If the size you require is not here, you will simply select custom and type in the size of the page here, etc. Or you can just do it straight away, even selecting custom. Orientation, portrait and landscape. Number of columns. We're going to have three as an example. Actually, let's put it to four as an example. Gutter is the space between the columns. Margins for today. I'm actually going to change this to 10 millimeter and then press tab on my keyboard and it will automatically change on all of these in one go because make all setting the same is actually on. If that was turned off, you'd have to put it manually in each one. Now, some people will have an inside margin bigger than the outside margin. Now, remember margins, we have the top of the page, the bottom of the page, inside and outside. Remember, this is not left and right. Inside is in the fold where the page opens. So some people have that slightly bigger to compensate for the area that is not legible or readable within the fold. So they might up that by a few millimeters. But today we're going to keep it uniformed. Bleed and slug. If you can't see the bleed and slug, it's in this little drop down here. So make sure you can see it. Now the bleed is an error trap. Most people have a bleed of three millimeters all the way around to five millimeters. Check with your printer. What I mean by that is not the physical printer, but the person who's going to print the work for you that they can, or what they recommend for their print setup. Now, this comes into its own with double-sided printing, because when the paper goes through the printer, the paper will shift slightly, so they won't marry up on the front and back. So what happens is when the guillotine is cut through to make the paper the exact size you want, um, graphics can appear with a white edge on them if they're on the edge of the page. So the idea is you make the graphics spread into the bleed, and when they're guillotined down to the correct size, you get no error. But that is covered later in some more depth. Slug. Slug is not used by most people doing simple little designs, but on a publication you will usually have some sort of slug within your document. The slug is not a print feature. It's usually not printed. It's usually discarded. Um, it's not even printed. It's turned off when you make the print file. But it's very handy to hold data for your publication or just reminders for people working on your publication. So 
I will usually add one to the top of my document and I will put things in there to remind me of things I need to do on certain pages. Now, remember we were talking about a preset right at the beginning. You can actually, we've made our preset here. So if we wanted to save it, so next time we came to use the program, we can simply click this button here. We can give it a name. I'm going to call it my zine 2 and then just do OK. You can see in the drop down there that we have now my zine 2. My zine is another one, obviously, but my zine 2. Once we're happy, click OK. Remember that preset, it may come up in the exam. Now, I'll explain what we have on the screen. We have this blue line. This is our slug area, okay? It goes across the top of our document. The red line that goes all the way around our document, that area is the bleed. The white area with the black line on the edge, that's our page. And then we have these magenta colored lines, purple, magenta. They're the guides of the columns and the margins, basically. 